here. God made man to rule and to be fruitful. That purpose may have seemed frustrated through the fall. However, ultimately the righteous seed will triumph and crush the serpent's head. Nun represents that righteous seed. Now the church in Hebrew is called Adat or Kahalat. And, within, and in, when the children of Israel were going through the wilderness, there was a church, there was a congregation of Israel. It was, um, when the congregation of Israel came before Moses, it wasn't all Israel, it was, it was like the senators. It was a select group of Israel. They are related to the top of the pyramid. If the 12 tribes are around the base of it, the congregation of Israel is at the top and it represents heavenly Mount Zion. The church of the firstborn uh, is that, uh, the church is called the church of the firstborn in Hebrews. The firstborn, related to uh, Ephraim, and because uh, Ephraim is my firstborn, and Joshua the son of Nun is that firstborn. And, but the church itself is feminine. Now you notice that... Um, there are seven branches, but the, the center branch, the Shemesh, is masculine. It's not curved. And uh, from, uh, if we put the seven churches in a line from, uh, and the se seven feasts, we'll find that um, the fourth feast is Pentecost. And that's when the church was formed, born. G one of two, two, G Yeshua had two, two things to accomplish, well, two big things. One of them was, um, well, the redemption of the cosmos, but let's just say the house of Israel. I've come, not come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then to build my church, my congregation. He's building this congregation of Israel, which is Zion, which we are a part of in Hebrews. It tells us that. So Pentecost was the birth of the church. The church is that feminine part of Israel. We, are all, we, we may be from Israel or from the nations, but he's forming us as a subset of Israel and the nations to rule over Israel. So if Israel, if we're formed out of Israel, but we're raised to a higher level, we're higher than John the Baptist. He who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater, greater than he. The Levites could only go halfway up the mountain. Same with the Sanhedrin, the 70 elders, halfway up Mount Sinai. But we've come all the way to the top. And it's now a matter of how far up on that top part are we. So we're, part of, we're, we're, we're related to that capstone in, in some way. The church is married to the firstborn Yeshua. And there's a picture of the bride in Revelation 12. With the 12 stars about her head. She's pregnant. She's pregnant with something. What's she pregnant with? That's not Mary. And the firstborn, the, the child, it's not Yeshua. It's just like Mary and Yeshua, but it isn't. The church is married to a firstborn and the church begets a firstborn, the man-child. And the man-child rises, just like that iron that did swim. And it, th they fetched in their hand and took it, and he was taken up into heaven. Now that's a picture from 2001 Space Odyssey. Really, that, that, their, 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 their child is really a, is a, really a Nephilim sort of hybrid, but uh, it was a good picture. It illustrates the story. Um, that just as they have their firstborn, their, their iron mixed with miry clay, so God has a firstborn. And that firstborn rules with the Lord with a rod of iron. It tells us that 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 child in Revelation 12 rules with a rod of iron. That doesn't say the child was crucified. It went straight up. Beam me up, Scotty. It was translated. And that's what the, the 15 songs of ascent are about the woman rising above the mountains. She's rising above the nations and she's rising in holiness until she is pregnant with a child, which is... Uh, rules with a rod of iron, and that one that rules with a rod of iron, we're told that the middle church, um, unfortunately I don't have the picture of the churches, but the middle church is Thyatira, 
And it just so happens that that middle church, that masculine church, they have the most, the, 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 the most masculine church have the most difficult things to overcome, a totally paganized church. And in the last days, a totally Babylonianized church. They rule with the Messiah with a rod of iron. That's their promise. There's two big promises, as I understand it, to Laodicea, where the overcomers uh, sit with the Lord on his throne. That's a pretty high privilege. But the, and that's more feminine. But the, 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 at the same time, there's also a portion of the church or the seed of the woman that uh, rules with a rod of iron. It's not Christ alone. The overcomers of Thyatira also rule with a rod of iron. And this man-child is told that he rules with a rod of iron. This man-child is not Christ. He's not crucified. He takes, it, it, it happens at the same time as the dragon falls from heaven. Okay, The dragon comes to destroy the woman. Can't because she's walking in holiness. So this hasn't happened yet. So, the firstborn man-child is Thyatira, the fourth church, Shemesh servant, and it rules with a rod of iron. The woman gives birth to the man-child. There's a few more slides and this is done. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. There's believing Zion, Israel. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, the great red dragon with seven, having seven heads and ten horns. We read about Leviathan having seven heads. So this is the dragon that's in the waters. And he's being cast out of heaven. The heaven remember there's heavenly waters? If you read about creation, there's the heavenly waters. And, and then there's the, um, the, the lower waters. Well, he's being cast out of the upper waters. The heavens where the birds are. If you read... Uh, Joshua, uh, uh, Jeremiah 4, 23, you know, it talks about, I beheld the earth and it was tohu vavohu, and, um, and there was no Adam, and all the birds of the heavens had fled. This is the heavenly beings that were in the heavens. Well, Satan's been cast out. He's that Leviathan in the upper waters. He's been cast out. And this is what we're struggling with. We're struggling with those upper waters. Paul says this, we struggle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. And that's not just disembodied spirits, it's not just demons, it's angels that we're struggling with. Daniel, uh, Gabriel, Michael, they fought with angels, the prince of Persia and Greece. That wasn't just some guy in a robe. That's angels, they're dealing with those principalities and powers in the heavens. These are angels that have not yet been judged. And midway through the tribulation, they are judged. Their cup of iniquity is full and they're poured out. See, for us, it seems like 6,000 years. It's just six days in the heavenly court. We're not talking about a lot of time. Our little lives down here are just little, it's over. You light a match and it goes down to the end. That's our lives. It's finished. So, so it's, this, is, this is all happening in six days in the courts of the Lord. We're in this kind of, there's, a, there's some sort of time thing going on. That down here, we experience time differently. Up there, um, it's just six days. Dra dragons in this courtroom thing. And then all of us, the last couple of days has been this thing called the church coming along. This heavenly Mount Zion, he's contesting it. And then, he, and then towards the end, he's getting desperate. He's, going, he's, going, he's clutching at straws. He's raising up Nephilim. He's doing all sorts of stuff. And it looks all amazing down here, but he's really just running out of tricks. Um, so this is what's going on. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. Are these the seven Canaanite nations which with Israel had to battle with? There wasn't eight of them. There were seven. There's often mentioned six. It's interesting. But then in some places it says seven and ten horns. The, the, the big battle they had was with the Malak who attacked them when they were complaining. So when we're down in the depths, we have to kind of not do what I do, which is complain too much. But we really need to talk to the Lord. I find it hard to talk to the Lord that's crushed my soul. And uh, that's what Joseph has to overcome in the pit. And that's what we all have to overcome. It's hard to talk to the one that crushes us. 
And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Okay, this, that's not literal stars. Okay, get that straight. Because if you get just one sun coming to the earth, you know, ball of fire, it's going to disintegrate the earth. These are the angels of the stars of heaven. And there's a, there's a lot of stars. So a third of a lot of the stars are going to come to the earth. That's bigger than the Nephilim. The Nephilim's just, a, just, just the beginning of things. When this thing hits the fan, it's, um, this is an intergalactic invasion of uh, interdimensional uh, things that go bump in the night. And um, uh, it, it's a big deal. And none of them can touch this woman. How you? But they can't, they can't get her. <laughs> they can't get her. Um, so um, a, a third of the stars of heaven and did cast him to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now it's a red dragon, red as Edom. So I'm not saying all of Edom is doing this, but he's involved as part of Satan. Leviathan is, is both a picture of Satan, but it's also a composite being. When you, it talks about the scales of Leviathan, they're all connected together so tightly there's no air between them. But it says in the Hebrew, no ruach between them. There's no spirit. They're without the spirit. Okay, so they're just a resound, they're, they're a mechanism in, in that sense. You know, without love, without the spirit of God, we're, 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 we're nothing. Um, so he's standing before the child with all his host and all his minions, a third of the stars of the sky. The earth opens up its mouth. Can't, he can't get a woman. Can't get it. Sounds, sounds like me. <laughs> anyway, and she brought forth the man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God to his throne. Just like that, that iron that fell and that was taken which we caused to swim. Well, why is it swimming? Well, this woman is raised 15 cubits above the water, above the mountains. She's on the water. She's walking on the water. And unlike Peter, she isn't sinking. Unlike Jonah, she, or, or, unlike Jonah, she's not thrown into the water. She's walking on the water. Un, unlike um, uh, Paul, she's not shipwrecked. Okay, but all of these are pictures of the same struggle. Uh, some people d uh, are struggling better than others. They that go to the sea in ships, these see the works of the Lord and the, the wonders in the deep. It's not just the deep of the physical waters down here, it's the deep of the spiritual waters above our heads. Because there's the Mayim of Shemaim, there's the there's a Havdil. He, he created a barrier between the upper waters and the lower waters. And what we're struggling with is the upper waters and the lower waters. There's the demonic realm in a way that's lower, but then there's the spiritual forces even higher than that that we're struggling with. And love will find a way. Remember the iron that fell and that caused to swim? Here it is, the man-child the rod of, that rules with a rod of iron. Yes, it is Yeshua. Okay, he's, part, he's the head of all of that, but he has brethren under him that are um, like, like Joseph, like that they are firstborn of a firstborn. So this promise in the garden between, uh, to Satan that I'll put enmity between the seed of the woman and thy seed has found its ultimate climax and uh, very height. This is a, a battle between two supermans. A good, you know, the, the Nazis want that they're ubermensch, but there's an actual superman from Israel, from Zion, that's yet to be born. And it's going to take the travail of the last days for that to happen. And um, then three and a half years later, we return with the king. And uh, so I guess this man-child does, these overcomers.